Hey guys, I'm Natalia. This is my little studio space. Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about pattern making and sewing essential tools. I've been getting a lot of pattern making request videos, so I thought it would be best to start at square one. And by a lot of requests, I mean like five people. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. These are the tools that I use, and I'm going to go over each one. Okay, there's a lot to cover, so let's go. First, I want to go over rulers. This is an 18 inch clear grid ruler. This is like the holy grail ruler. You need this ruler. This ruler will change your life. Like, it is just the best ruler. And then I have like a little mini version of it too. Then you will need a hip curve. It's metal, it's really sturdy. This is for when you're drafting pants or skirts. And I put stickers on it because like look how cute. Next ruler you will need is an L square. So this is for when you're drafting patterns and you need to have that 90 degree angle, very important. You need a long ruler, long metal ruler. This has several uses, so for pattern drafting and also if you're cutting with a rotary cutter, you're gonna need a strong edge so you can cut along that line. You can't use a plastic ruler because you'll damage the plastic ruler. So Then you're going to need a French curve. I lost my other French curve so I only have this one and it's broken. But they are great for armholes, um, the neck, scissors. There are different kinds of scissors. So there are fabric scissors and then there are paper scissors. Never ever ever cut paper with your fabric scissors because then they will get dull. Never do it. Never. This one is Fisker's brand. They're not super expensive and they have a spring to them, which I really like because my wrists are like kind of delicate. As you can see, the scissors are flat on the bottom because they're meant to cut fabric like flat on the table. Otherwise, like if you cut in the air, it's gonna be jagged and your fabric will be like kind of crooked and It'll just be a mess. Ginger scissors, those are the top notch, bougie quality, high end zippers. I don't, scissors, I don't like them though because they hurt my wrists. Then you have paper scissors, just any standard. You will need little clippers. You're sewing and you need to clip the thread. A seam ripper, this is super essential. Honestly, just buy a ton of seam rippers. It doesn't matter how much experience you have in sewing, you will always need a seam ripper. I wanna talk about pins. Here I have pins for draping and I will link the brand I use below. And then I also use these pins for sewing. I know they look like a little bit crafty, but I love them. Um, I don't use these for draping though because if you're ironing, the little plastic heads could melt. But I use this when I'm pinning fabric together to sew because it's just more comfortable for me. Like, I don't know, I, I kind of have like delicate fingers. So these magnetic pin holders are fantastic. I don't use the regular pin cushion. I think the magnetic version is way, way more convenient. This is another tool that's I just love. It is a little <laughs> magnet and it picks up pins from the floor. I use this like on a daily basis called the grip. <laughs> For pattern making, you're going to be using mechanical pencils because you want an accurate straight line. You don't want varying thicknesses in your pattern making. However, when you are draping on the form, which means you have a uh, muslin fabric pinned onto the form, you're gonna be using a standard pencil because the mechanical pencil lead is too thin and too sharp and you need something that will actually show up on the fabric. For flat pattern, you will need colored pencils. So when you need to make corrections, you will mark it in a different color. You will need a chalk pencil or Taylor's chalk is great too. This is the brand that I use. I have a pen and a Sharpie because they always come in handy and a little notebook for fit notes. 
There's also an awl. This is for marking on the pattern and your fabric where a dart is. I have clips, so if you're working with leather, you don't want to pin the leather, otherwise it's going to leave a hole. So I use little binder clips and you can put a little piece of paper so it doesn't indent the leather. I have little safety pins and these are great when you're doing fittings on a model because you don't want to stab the model with pins. You need an eraser for mistakes. A tracing wheel. There's different kinds. There's like the very spiky ones and then there's less spiky ones. You're going to need pattern weights. These aren't specifically for patterns, but they're just paper weights that I have. You will need tape, super, super essential. Measuring tape. Here I have muslin fabric. So they sell different weights of this and muslin is used to make the prototype of the fabric, so let me give you an example. I have this blazer in a prototype fabric before I make it into wool. So this way, with the muslin and the prototype fabric, you can check to see if there's any mistakes in your pattern before you cut up your expensive fabric. And you can also use muslin to drape patterns. Essential tools, a sausage and a ham, shinka y kubasa. <laughs> These are for pressing curved edges and harder to reach parts that a flat iron board can't help you with. This is a sleeve board, so this is for pressing sleeves. You'll need an iron and an ironing board. So here I have this little wooden tool to make a sharp corner. You're turning something inside out. And this is better than using scissors because if you use scissors, you might actually accidentally make a hole in your fabric. Here I have a lint roller because I have cats. This is twill tape or style tape. Um, they also sell the sticky version, but this is for putting guidelines on the mannequin when you're draping. Hand sewing needles. This is a little bit more of a niche tool. <laughs> it's a hemostat, so it's actually a surgical tool, but it's really good for sewing invisible zippers when you need to pull the zipper. And I learned this in my, this little technique in my haute couture sewing class. <laughs> Here I have a loop turner. This is great for making spaghetti straps. It flips it inside out. Another essential is envelopes and a cutter's must to keep your patterns organized so you should have on your cutters must the style number description of the pattern all the pieces quantity listed the date and fabric type and all of that all the details so it just keeps you organized because if you have a lot of patterns you need to keep your pattern library organized another thing that i don't have but need to get is a large like extra extra large ziploc style plastic bags. Those are great for bigger patterns because you're not actually supposed to fold your patterns too much. Otherwise they can get distorted. So that's what I learned when I <laughs> went to this pattern grading place. Of course, pattern paper is a must. This one is numbered, so it'll help you. They're just guidelines, but you don't have to get a numbered pattern paper. You can get one that's just plain with no markings on it. It's really up to you. Another pattern making and sewing essential to have in your studio is a mirror. It doesn't need to be as big as this one, but if you have a full length mirror, it will help you when you do a fitting, it'll help you fit the garment. The next thing I want to talk about is mannequins. They are both pant forms. This one I got from Amazon for about $350 and uh, it's a size 6 but it runs small so it's more like a 4. This one is hollow. And then this one, my school was giving out free mannequins which never happens. Senior year they were giving out 
free mannequins because they had just bought new mannequins. And so me and my friends, we sprinted to that classroom, like multiple flights of stairs. And it was a first come first serve basis. Ran into that room. I got a mannequin and it was a different one than this one. It was smaller. And my friend had this one and we were both like looking at each other. And then she was like, do you want to switch mannequins? Because she wanted the smaller one and I wanted the bigger one. And that is the story of how I got this mannequin. This one's padded and it's not hollow. So this is, I think it's a wolf from wolf, wolf form. And then they just covered it with padding to make it a little bit bigger. But these mannequins are about a thousand dollars. So I'm really happy that I got it for free. Okay, a few more things. You will need oak tags. So this is a thicker type of cardboard paper and you will need it to make slopers. Slopers are the basic patterns without seam allowance and they help you develop all your other patterns. For example, here I have a basic bodysuit pattern and from this pattern you can create different stretch tops, you can create stretch dresses, you can create different styles of bodysuits. It's just your basic starting point. Sewing machines. I personally use an industrial Juki sewing machine because that is like my dream. <laughs> but you don't need that as a beginner. As a beginner, I started off with a home sewing machine, one like this. It's a brother machine. And I still use this for a zigzag stitch, so it's a CS6000i computerized sewing machine by Brother. I really like it. It has all these different stitch options. So I use this for zigzag, but it can also just do regular stitches. You can pretty much do everything with this machine. You don't need an industrial machine. The only con of a home sewing machine is that it really can't handle very heavy fabrics like denim or leather very well. That's the only downside. Another machine I use on a daily basis is my overlock machine. This helps you get a clean finish for knit fabrics, denims, pretty much everything. So I use an overlock constantly and I got this brother overlock machine from Walmart. Another essential is having good lighting so you can see what you're working on. I use fluorescent lights, which is like, they're a little bit depressing, but I feel like they help me see better when I'm sewing. You'll need water, Studio Essential. Stay hydrated. I have one of these to, um, you know, boost morale in the studio. Where I got the... Having a large pattern making table is really a plus if you have the space for it. It'll make drafting patterns, cutting patterns, and cutting fabric much, much easier. Another studio essential is having a clothing rack that you can hang your samples, your garments, and your slopers on. So this one is from Walmart, and then I just painted the ends white because the rest of my studio is white. That is all for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and for hanging out with me in the studio for a few minutes. I am gonna try to make more pattern making videos, but I hope that this can help you get started with the tools that you'll need to create patterns. Thanks, bye.